The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Well, welcome, everybody. This is Ron Seaver calling in from the National Sports Forum. Uh, you are joining us here on our first uh, NSF webinar of the new year. So first and foremost, Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, I know we're halfway through January, but I think that's still allowed. Uh, but we are delighted to have you here uh, being a part of our webinar. Uh, and I know for a lot of you, this is your first webinar. Uh, I see some very familiar faces that join us uh, uh, repeatedly, and we welcome you back as well. But I know for a lot of us that are on this particular call, uh, we're new to the forum world, and or we're thinking about jumping into the forum world. So we wanted to take this next hour just to kind of bring you behind the scenes kind of tell you what's going to be going on at the National Sports Forum coming up and, and how we hope that you'll come join us. So we've got three great speakers, each um, not only bringing their expertise to the forum, uh, but also doing it in a multitude of different ways. So uh, we're going to speak to each one of them. They're going to tell us a little bit uh, about what to expect from their particular session. Uh, and then uh, we're going to, if there are any questions, uh, Ashley will give them to me afterwards. But uh, for those of you that have never been to the forum, I know you know us mostly from our bi-monthly webinars. Uh, and certainly uh, that you might know us from selling it. And especially if you don't know about selling it, I want to tell you about it. Uh, we do a bi-weekly, bi every other Wednesday, uh, we do an online e-zine, e if you would, uh, that's called Selling It. And it's sponsored by Sports Digita. Uh, so we're delighted to be working with uh, Angelina and her team at Sports Digit on this. And uh, this comes out, it's absolutely free. You just have to sign up for it. But the forum is all about trying to expose people to new ideas. What's new and novel? What are the hottest trends going on out there in our particular part of the sports industry? And when I talk about our particular part, the focus on the forum, and I should say this up front, uh, we, we work uh, in and explore and, and bring people together from what we call the four pillars of our industry. And that would be ticket sales, sponsorship, marketing, and business development. And all of the things that resonate within those four pillars several of which we're going to talk about today, from fan service to uh, even the latest trends in non-traditional revenue. Esports is very is a very, very hot topic, and we're very excited to have Waco with us here. Um, but these are all things that are ex going to be discussed and explored at the NSF. Uh, if you have not been to our website uh, and certainly want to look over the agenda, either now or after the call, but certainly go to our website at www.sports sports dash forum f o r u m dot com and you'll see that you can pull down the agenda menu and you can see what sessions are happening when who's speaking what their expertise is on it uh, but to that also you can also register on every page you'll see our, our easy button as they say in the top corner uh, that you can just punch and go to your registration uh, one thing I did want to mention here now is that um, the timing on our webinar today uh, is a little bit weird because our prices just changed last night our prices went up a hundred dollars across the board uh, so here here's the deal uh, we want to make a special offer to the folks that are on the call to keep the old prices through the end of this week. So if you take a look on your screen there, all you have to do when you register, instead of hitting the easy button, just write to Haley at sports-forum.com. You can see this on your screen there. And she's going to, she will keep that 1695 price uh, for you. And as it says on the screen, for the next 48 hours. So we hope you'll take advantage of this. We'll remind you again before the call is over. Uh, if you are interested in signing up for selling it, I saw we had some people that have already signed up today. Uh, that's our easing. That's free. You can also get that uh, by going to our website as well. So with that said, uh, we want to basically bring you into the N NSF, and we call this the uh, the preview call. Uh, and we wanted to start by, by introducing you to three of our selected speakers that are going to be doing different sessions at the forum. The forum is part social. I mean, and it's it can be very social. You can see as you go there, uh, you know, beginning with our, our Dactronic Sunday welcome uh, reception, we're going to take folks behind the scenes over at Toyota Stadium. 
uh, which in Frisco, Texas, if you have not been there lately, boy, you, you can't, I bet you, you're going to love it. It has just blossomed. Uh, the entire community has just blossomed. It's Sports Town USA, and for a very, very good reason, uh, two of which are two of our hosts and certainly one of our partners there, the Frisco Rough Riders as well. Uh, but we're going to start everybody off on Sunday night, take you behind the scenes over at Toyota Stadium, the home of FC Dallas, and give you a chance to see how they lay out their facility. Of particular note uh, that we're really looking forward to, there's a, a hard hat tour uh, because – FC Dallas is about to open up the U.S. Soccer Hall of Fame. Now, most of us are familiar with Halls of Fame. You probably did not know there was. This is going to be the invention of the new U.S. Soccer Hall of Fame, and it's going to be the first Hall of Fame that's actually attached to a stadium or facility. Those of you who are familiar with Springfield in Massachusetts with the NBA or Cooperstown, those are standalone facilities. This one's actually the first one that's built in and of uh, one of the facilities there. So we'll get a chance to go behind the scenes uh, and see how that's coming together. That's slated to open up during the upcoming MLS season. Uh, so we'll see that. And then, of course, we wrap the forum with the Budweiser Gala, a longstanding tradition of the forum and a great way to end the show. Uh, and we're going to be taking everybody over to the, um, to the star. And if you haven't seen the star, wait until you see it. It's the, uh, the newest invention, if you would, of the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, and it is their training facility, uh, but I use that term loosely. It is a community that they have created uh, with five football fields, but more than that, there's hotels, restaurants, office buildings. It is unbelievable. It's spectacular, guys. Uh, and rather than show you pictures or tell you about it, we're, excuse me, we're literally going to put you on the bus and take you over there uh, and give you a chance to actually see it, walk around, have people point things out to you. We've always found that it's so much better with our group, especially when they get the chance to go behind the scenes and see the things, because you're going to see things that they might not have brought up in a presentation, and you can stop the guide right there and say, whoa, now, now what, what's this? What's the story behind this? Or what's the story behind the sponsorship of this? How, how did this come together? So it's a great opportunity to actually see what's, what's happening uh, in real time uh, and certainly all the friends that you will meet. Uh, in between all of this, as you might imagine, there is a lot of education. Uh, 32 breakout sessions. We have super panels. Something we haven't actually put on the website yet um, is we're going to open the show on Monday uh, morning uh, with uh, our good friend Abe Madcor. Uh, from SBJ and Sports Business uh, Daily. Uh, he's going to be moderating a fireside chat uh, with Clark and Dan Hunt, the Hunt brothers. Uh, for those of you who may not know who they are, the Hunt brothers uh, own and operate not only FC Dallas, which we have seen the night before at the Dactronics opening, but they also own the Kansas City Chiefs. So it's going to be very, very interesting to get their insight and intel. Uh, so it's just an hour sit down with both of the Hunt brothers to talk about what's going on. And, and I'm not even sure if that's made it onto our website yet. So that's how fresh that is. But it will also, now that's Monday, but believe it or not, the conference really opens on Sunday. We open on Sunday with 16 different workshops that are going on. Two of our workshop moderators are on the call this morning. Uh, and so I'm, I'm going to uh, be quiet here and turn over to one of ours. I mean, one of the things that's been so interesting for us uh, as we see the business of sports. Now, this is our 23rd year. So we have been at this for quite some time. And, you know, things that we've got a couple of great workshops that we're going to be exploring, doing a deep dive in that we weren't even talking about three years ago. Uh, and some of the, you know, two of them, these are two of the hottest trends that in working with our steering committee members, they have identified as something that they most want to, that they're dealing with on a daily basis. And the first one is one we call non-traditional revenue or NTR. Uh, for those of us who are in, in the stadium or sports property business, uh, working with ball clubs, working with uh, races and tournaments, we know that, you know, one of the things that the pressure is on us in addition to, you know, 81 baseball games, we're being pressured by our graders, you know, our powers that be, if you would, our bosses, our owners, our boards of directors, to come up with, with new and interesting novel ways to continue to use our facilities. How else could we be using this facility to be generating revenue for the organization? You know, 80 games, 10 games, it's not enough. You know, 40 home games. 
Uh, we need to be using our facility when it's dark. We're not making any money on it. So for a lot of us, that's very new turf. We know how to run the operations and the marketing for our games. But how about attracting and putting on different events, outside events? What kinds of outside events could we be doing? So I think as an industry, we're very much at the infancy space, you know, phase of doing something like this. But fortunately for us, you know, we have been able to meet somebody that's been new for, for our team. Uh, and we have been very blessed to have her uh, really come. She found us, actually, I think, initially. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm delighted to introduce you to uh, the vice president of sports and entertainment for a company called PSAV. Very a household name in the hotel and entertainment industry, but certainly somebody that's new to us in the sports industry and somebody that you have to be paying a lot of attention to. Uh, so we're delighted to have Eileen Valois with us to kind of take us inside. Well, she's got two things coming up in Frisco. She's going to be moderating the NTR workshop, our first ever NTR workshop, bringing together people that do very much what Eileen does. And uh, there are some, some folks that are, have gotten in in this industry uh, and they've, they've done some terrific things with it. Uh, so a great workshop to bring some experience and people <laughs> looking to get more experience together. But in addition, she's also leading a breakout session on Tuesday, which will be February 13th uh, in the afternoon called Communicate, Collaborate, Create, generating revenue 365 days a year. Again, along that theme of what can we be doing to generate revenue for our organizations as we go along. Um, so let me introduce you, Eileen, just to give you a quick background here, 25 years of experience in the event industry. Uh, and she has been the last 11 with PSAV. She runs, she's the leader of their sports and entertainment division. Now, in her role with PSAV, she's responsible and oversees all the event technology and production services in stadiums, arenas, and special event venues. Eileen and her team uh, are focused on creating strategic partnerships with teams, certainly with leagues and venue leaders to deliver innovative experiences for their guests and attendees and service, uh, help them to leverage your brands better to win new audiences over and drive revenue uh, to our bottom line across our organization. Now, in addition to this, and uh, a shameless plug, they're an official sponsor of the forum. They do an outstanding job. Those of you who've been coming to the forum for years saw last year when they first got involved with us, what a tremendous overnight you know, uh, improvement. I, I mean, improvement isn't even the word that they brought to our AV and to our staging, uh, our entire production, uh, just by their expertise. So uh, I'm absolutely delighted to have PSAV in our family, and I'm delighted to be able to turn uh, turn the floor over to Eileen. Eileen, take us through NTR and tell us a little bit about what we're going to be hearing from you next month in Frisco. Well, thank you, Ron. I really appreciate all of those kind words, and uh, we're thrilled to be part of the the forum family, and that's exactly what it is. Last year was my first year, and it's not been attending again as uh, you know an official sponsor. But um, but I quickly realized that it is a family, and uh, and it quickly became really my favorite experience. I think um, in terms of networking and connecting with the industry, um, because it really just felt quickly by day two. I think like it was sort of an old home week for us. Um, so we really enjoyed that, and we're. We're so excited about Frisco. Um, on the production side of it, we have got some amazing things that we have planned with your entire team. It's been integral in that planning process, but we've got some really great stuff planned for the production elements this year. So I'm excited for everybody to come and, and really see that and see some of the new technologies that we're deploying. Um, but, the, but the workshop is, is definitely something that is been a label of leg for me. I'm a certified special event planner and a certified meeting planner. I spent you know, the first 15 or 16 years of my career um, as a venue leader, so whether it be a general manager in a hotel or a special event venue um, in both operations and sales, and, and joined, I was a customer of PSAB actually uh, way back then, and uh, joined PSAB um, and have been with PSAB for 11 years, as you mentioned, and so, you know, but, but the event industry is something that is in my blood and, and has always been part of my career, and I, I love it. I thrive on it. So I really enjoyed the opportunity to work with your team, Ron, 
um, in building out this workshop and with some of the greatest uh, people I have met in this industry, we put together an executive committee, which I'll show you in just a, a few moments, to really plan out a, a, a workshop that is, is really meaningful and that delivers uh, on what I'm referring to as actionable intelligence. We want them to come to this workshop and to really engage and to really have an interactive discussion with us um, and, and take back not just, you know, a great experience from Frisco, but to take back little nuggets that they can deploy in their business, best practices or, you know, challenges that they're facing, you know, ideas on, and ways to solve them, to take back and actually share with their entire team and, and really put into, put into operation and really kind of change their business or, or enhance what they're already doing or, or start something new for them. So, um, Ashley, if you'll move to the next slide, it's, um, it's it really kind of just want to first talk about what does what do we mean by non-traditional revenue? What what is what is it that we're referring to, and 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 really why are we talking about it? Ron really led with with some of that, so so that's great, right? We're we're looking to understand how we can utilize our facilities every day of the year. That's certainly true, um, but but what we really have an opportunity to do as well is to leverage the brand of the team of the iconic venues in which you're working um, and, and really be able to ex extend that across the entire operation, across the entire organization, um, connect and engage really with your community, with your corporate sponsorship customers, um, with your suite holders, with your season ticket holders, and your private events customers. So, so that's kind of the, what, what we want to talk about, but what is non-traditional revenue? It is essentially everything that is happening um, off the field, outside of the actual game. So it is non-game day events. That could be private events. Um, that could be special events that might be ticketed or not ticketed for your community. Um, it could be concerts. It could be uh, community at large sort of events that extend even beyond the gates of your stadium and, and out into the city. Um, but it also could be game day in terms of fan engagement opportunities, you know, events that are, are getting the fans excited before the game, after the game, how are we engaging those fans? And I know there's a lot of talk around fan engagement, but it's becoming something that is just so important to our business. Um, you know, I, I frankly could sit on the worst places in the world and watch almost any game. That, that, that's me. But that's not the way it is for many people. They want to be engaged. They want to have experience. We see the millennial generation in particular spending far more of their income on experiences than they are on products or goods. And we see them bringing the rest of us that are not millennials right along with them. They want to be engaged. And we can do that through immersive uh, experiences and events. So that's what we mean by non-traditional revenue. Um, and I think it's really crucial to, to our business and to really the demand that we're seeing from our our fans and our customers and our guests. Um, you know, and in, in non-traditional revenue, what we really want to look at is, you know, a lot of people might think of it and think, well, there's private events and that's a department within our organization. It's not. It has the power to be so much more than that. Uh, Ashley, if you'll advance to the next slide. Um, so we've gotten together uh, with uh, some, some counterparts across the industry to really look at what is it that we want to talk about? What is it that we want to focus on? Um, this is the executive committee that we have put together. Uh, as you'll see, we have Madison Square Garden. We saw the Brown from Madison Square Garden, so it's phenomenal in what she's doing. And this is area of interest uh, in her focus at Madison Square Garden is really on corporate hospitality. She's, she's looking at suites and, and how to engage the suite holders. Um, so not even in the event business per se, as you might normally define it, um, Emily Hamill from the New York Yankees, uh, incredible event business that they're doing there. Um, we have Scott Burkett from the Frisco Rough Riders, uh, Chief Operating Officer. Carrie Campbell from Fenway Park. She is the VP of Sales and Service for Fenway Park and specifically works with private events. Um, we have Carlos from the Cleveland Browns, who is uh, working in special events and, and fan experience. Lynette from the Eagles. Lynette is a powerhouse. <laughs> uh, uh, fantastic. I presented in a breakout with her over the summer she was at the NSF Summer Summit and wow, was a really fantastic experience. Um, and she's involved in private events. Um, and then Nikki Romalo from Sporting KC. And 
Let me tell you, it was in the MLS headquarter office a few weeks ago when I asked him which of your teams, which of your clubs um, is, is really doing a fantastic job. Is there one that stands out? Didn't even, there wasn't even a hesitation. It was Sporting KC. They are driving the most non-game day event business out of any of the clubs in the MLS. So really strong executive committee and different perspectives too, which I think was important. Um, I am... You know, traditionally, I started my career in operations. Uh, I've done sales along the way. Um, I've done a lot of logistical planning. But it's very important to me um, in any kind of a, a sales role that we consider the entire landscape. You know, it's not enough to, to sell something. You have to make sure that the logistics make sense. We have to be able to execute successfully so that we can deliver service, so that we can have repeat business and continue to build off of those sales. So I think this committee represents that. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, some of the areas of content that we came up with um, that I really want to kind of take you through today um, are, you know, again, we're going to go around the room to all of our workshop attendees and really just get the sense of what does non-traditional revenue mean to them, because it does vary depending on what type of team you are involved with, what type of facility. I mean, let's break it down. Even if you have a roof or no roof, that can affect your event business, right? Um, it just it changes how we might approach it. Um, we we want to talk about some of the greatest challenges that we face uh, in our business. We want to talk about some of the best practices. This is going to be a seasoned uh, group of facilitators and moderators. We want to talk about some of the best practices, and we want to hear from our workshop attendees uh, as to what their best practices might be. Um, but, you know, this, this is a business that is definitely not without its challenges. Let's face it, the primary purpose of all of our stadiums and arenas and ballparks is the sport itself. There is no question. That is what anchors all of us. Um, and so to come in and to build a business that sort of revolves around that is not without its challenges. Um, and we want to talk about that. We want to really have some candid discussion about that. Um, we want to talk about the strategic revenue generation, which I – I'm a really big proponent of. I really believe there's a strategy that can be deployed that, again, as I mentioned when we first started talking, leverages the brand, expands the network. I want to understand your corporate sponsorship customers. Where are they holding their private meetings and events? Why aren't they in the ballpark if they're not in the ballpark? And if they are, how can we make sure that we capture more of them? You know, your private events customers to call you to say, hey, let's do a, a meeting in your ballpark. Are they a prospect for your corporate sponsorship team? They should be, you know, and, and your season ticket holders. Everybody works somewhere. Where are their companies holding meetings? You know, why aren't they utilizing your ballpark if they're not or their stadium or your arena? So we want to talk about it's, it's great to build a private events business, but how do we actually tap in and have all of your departments working together um, to really achieve a common goal of driving brand loyalty, you know, fan engagement, community engagement, and revenue across the entire organization. Um, so that's a big piece of that strategic revenue. Um, something I'm really excited about, the executive committee and I have come up with this idea of creating a digital playbook. Um, you know, I, I spend a lot of time at conferences. Uh, over the years, I've, I've spent a lot of time. PSAV, actually my company, we, we plan over a million and a half meetings a year. So we plan a lot of conferences. And for me personally, as someone who attends the conference, if I take a week or a few days away from my, my day job and I spend time at a conference, I want to come away with something that's meaningful to me. I want to come away with evidence of that great time that I spent there in something that I can go back to, to frankly, my leadership and say, look, here's what I got out of this and this is why it's so valuable to me to attend next year. Um, and so we've created this idea of a digital playbook. The executive committee right now is working hard to kind of start writing that digital playbook. Um, again, intelligence that you can take back and put into play. Uh, photographs, best practices. But we're not going to finish it before the workshop because we want to engage the workshop attendees. We want to collect all of that data that we work on. Um, and we want to put that together in a, in a really great format. And we're going to send that out to all of our workshop attendees about two weeks after, after the forum is over so that they can really take that information back and have it be really meaningful to their, to their organization. So that's kind of a look, um, at the content. Uh, we'll give you a quick glimpse of the agenda. Um, we are going to start our day off by taking a tour, behind the scenes tour of Dr. Pepper Ballpark, which is just 
awesome. I got to see it for the first time earlier this year and really just thought it was amazing. And I'm, I'm excited for the workshop attendees to be able to see it and take a tour of it. Scott Burkett will take us through that um, and take us through what their event space looks like. How do they do events in this sort of non-traditional space? Um, a big part of this, too, is how to utilize every inch of your space. Your loading dock may look like a loading dock to you, but guess what? With Phoenix and with uh, technology and a few enhancements, you can turn it into a spectacular space, and the guests will think it's very cool that they're on your loading dock. So we want to look at things like that. Then we'll go into our uh, our workshop itself and really go into some interactive sessions. Um, these are intended to be very interactive. We really want everybody to be a part of it. We'll have iPads on every table so that everybody can submit questions and be engaged and and just have some immediate audience engagement and response that will be going on. So we'll go through our day kind of hitting on those topics that I talked about. And then we're going to board buses, which I'm very excited about, uh, for uh, Toyota Stadium. And we will take you through Toyota Stadium, sort of a behind the scenes tour of the reception before the, the general forum audience comes. Um, and we are going to set up a little bit of an experience uh, showcase, if you will, um, at Toyota Stadium. We're going to take some of their event spaces and we're going to show you what the possibilities could be um, by just changing things a little bit, by adding things, by adding some event enhancements and, you know, kind of show you how those things can be transformed. So we'll take that tour through there and then we will join uh, the forum attendees at large when they come for the reception. So that's kind of a look at our day. Um, and I think it's going to be a really fantastic day. I'm looking forward to some great discussion. And, uh, and I'm excited that it's the first time ever for the forum. Right, Ron? Oh, it is. Um, we're very much. I mean, it's interesting. As you were talking about, I was thinking, like, going back over the last five years ago, for example, uh, you would find very few teams that had somebody employed uh, that was in data analytics. I mean, there might be the random one or two person that did it, and there really wasn't that, it wasn't that what it is today. Now every organization has a data analytics department, and they're flourishing. I would say five years from now, every organization is going to have an NTR department. I mean, we have, mm -hmm. you have done a great job of capturing some of the leaders. I mean, I know Lynette from the Eagles. The Eagles do a tremendous job in non-traditional revenue. I know you even got one of the organizations. Just to give you some idea, if you're out there listening about how, how massive this can become, uh, one of uh, PSAV's clients, uh, I think before PSAV got involved, it was a, it was a ball club, uh, and they did eh, just over 100 events. You know, I, and then once now started working with PSAV, uh, this year they'll do close to 700 events outside of the traditional ball games that they play, just to show you how massive that has become. So for those of you who are listening in who are just thinking about starting a department or you're starting the department, uh, in addition to the workshop, Eileen will also, because if you're in another workshop and you can't be part of that one uh, over at Dr. Pepper Ballpark, um, then there will be a breakout session focusing on non-traditional revenue. As I mentioned on Tuesday at the forum, one of our breakouts uh, that Eileen will be moderating is called Communicate, Collaborate, Create generating revenue 365 days a year. So a great opportunity if you can't spend the day with Eileen and the team over with the Frisco Rough Riders and going behind the scenes at, uh, at Toyota Stadium. Definitely make plans to be a part of her breakout session uh, that will be there as well. So Eileen, we're putting you to work and, and absolutely loving it. So thank <laughs> you so much for doing that and putting this yeah, together. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I'm happy to. It's been great. Oh, and it's, it's going to be a terrific turnout. We've gotten a lot of people that have already asked us about it. Uh, and we've also had a lot of people, our next speaker, um, this is somebody, ironically enough, I, he and I met each other at an outside event, an outside conference. We happened to be sitting next to each other a couple of years ago uh, watching a basketball game. It wasn't just a basketball game. It was the NCAA Finals. I don't know if you remember this, Waco, but you and I happened to be sitting next to each other watching Villanova uh, win, I want to say, in a last-second shot. Uh, and everybody's going wild, and you and I had been spending the game talking to each other, and it was like, so what do you do? Well, I don't know, what do you do? And we found out that our worlds very much connect with each other, and Waco's in a, in a very fascinating um, part of the world that we've been very, very interested in, uh, and it's just one fraction of his world. Uh, I mean, I knew uh, Waco through one of his, his, uh, his companies that he owns, 
Uh, and just to tease him, I mean, he is what we call a serial entrepreneur, constantly building new companies. He's got over 15 years of experience uh, in the live event sector uh, and certainly with media industries across the music, film, sports festival, uh, sports and festival, esports, healthcare, and tech sectors. Uh, in fact, a team I was just fortunate enough last month, Eileen and I went over to Las Vegas with several of our guys here at the forum uh, to see one of his events, Waco's events called X Live uh, in Las Vegas, a giant turnout that focuses on everything that I just talked, music, film, sports, festivals, esports. Uh, it was it was an absolutely incredible event that we got a chance to go over there. And I've really loved sitting down and going to Waco's. They, he puts on, uh, I think, six events a year that focus on anything from data analytics uh, to esports and all parts in between festivals. Uh, and I love speaking to him about the, the burgeoning world of esports, particularly where it's intersecting with our world in traditional sports. Uh, this is a very, very hot topic for us. You can see this going on all across uh, in different – not a day goes by. We don't seem to read about uh, uh, an NFL owner, an NBA owner purchasing a franchise in eSports. And for a lot of us, I know we sit there and scratch our heads, and we've got owners that are going, so what's going on here? Is this something we should be getting involved in? And if we do, how should we get involved in it? So, you know, in talking to Waco, I asked him if he wouldn't mind, if you would, being our dean this coming year uh, of our esports efforts and our initiatives, since he knows that world so well. And he's put together not only a workshop on Sunday, which uh, we're going to have him chat about, uh, but he'll also likewise be doing a breakout session on Monday, on Monday afternoon, called Understanding the Esports Ecosystem in Pro Sports, which is a perfect topic. Uh, I know he's got a fireside chat he's putting together, but it's a perfect chat um, for those of you who are sitting there now trying to figure out, okay, should we get into this space? Or those of you who have gotten into the space trying to figure out, all right, what should we do with it? One of the great things about the forum, you're pulling together over 150 different ball clubs and sports properties. Uh, you've got over 1,000 people there. Uh, it's a great opportunity to get all these different minds from different worlds together to talk about what's working, how they're doing it, even what's not working so we don't make those mistakes. So we're very fortunate to have Waco with us, uh, you know, overseeing and championing our esports effort. So with that said, Waco, let me uh, step aside here and have you talk and take us through this a little bit, if you would. Super. Thanks, Ron. I really appreciate it. And, uh, it's uh, wonderful to be here with uh Everyone, I look forward to uh, seeing everybody uh, next month in, uh, in Frisco. Uh, last, uh, last year was the first time I had the pleasure of joining Ron and his team uh, at NSF up in uh, Minneapolis, and it was uh, a wonderful experience, uh, I have to say. Extremely congenial. I knew I go, went into it knowing a handful of people, and very quickly uh, met so many different groups uh, just because the networking was so great. And then the opportunity to... Uh, probably uh, too much networking uh, on my behalf because we ended up staying out probably too late than we needed to. And so the next mornings it was a little rough sometimes getting up, but, uh, but that was only because uh, it was, uh, it was a lot, so much fun and there was so much going on. It was amazing. Um, ha having said that, jumping into what we're going to be covering as it relates to esports uh, here. Um, so as, as Ron alluded to, it's one of the fastest growing market segments uh, you know, within the, you know, within sports, you know, as, as an industry at large. And it's something to me that's extremely fascinating because the speed at which it evolves and changes is constantly moving and it's faster than so many other organizations and other industries that are out there. Uh, I'll give you a, an example. I was, um, I was at CES last week and saw the uh, keynote uh, from the CEO of Intel, uh, and he was talking about what they're doing with VR at the, uh, the upcoming Winter Olympics on how it's going to be the largest ever VR install, which is a tremendous amount that happens around esports and that. Um, but esports was a huge, huge focus uh, of Intel. Now, Intel obviously – outside of you know traditional sports but as you know everyone probably has seen they do so many different partnerships across industries across sports um massive and so uh setting the stage for what esports is now and today and what it's going to become is something that is if it's not if your organizations aren't already doing something or have or already have an ongoing initiative uh you're 
almost certainly thinking about it um, because it's something that uh, there are so many touch points uh, for new monetization strategies. It completely dovetails off of uh, off of Eileen's uh, talk about non-traditional revenue and how you can uh, continue to um, have new events outside the traditional, uh, you know, uh, uh, ball club events that are taking place on the schedule. Um, and so if we could go to the next slide, I want to just talk a little bit uh, about the specifics that we're going to be able to, to get into. And we've got two different things, uh, two sets going on here. We have our esports, um, <clears throat> understanding the esports ecosystem and pro sports. Uh, we actually have a couple of amazing gentlemen uh, who are going to be joining us for that um, and talking about a couple of different topics we'll get into here in a moment. Um, but for anyone who isn't familiar with kind of some of the nuance around esports, last year in 2017, it generated about $1.5 billion in revenue. And by 2020, it's poised to hit um, uh, $2.3 billion. Now, one important detail on that is uh, at the end of 2016, uh, the projection was uh, to generate $1 billion. And so you can see it beat it by a margin of about 50%. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if by 2020 we far exceed that $2.3 billion number. Uh, so it's a growing, growing space um, that, uh, that, that, that touches so many different things. And for any of you who may not be familiar with some of the initiatives that are out there, uh, the NBA has their NBA 2K League, uh, yeah, EA Sports, and uh, Madden and the NFL launch an official partnership as well. Uh, so there, and then uh, FIFA actually just announced uh, a, a huge partnership and some initiatives around esports also. So this whole initiative is is coming and it's already here. Uh, what's interesting is esports has been around for you know, well over 15 years, but it's just something that's really started to come on everyone's radar over the past several years. And there are countless examples uh, of organizations that are doing some really special things around that. And uh, in, the, in our, our session, our breakout session, and also in the workshop uh, that we put together uh, for you on Sunday, uh, we have some amazing groups uh, who are actively engaged in the pro sports uh, arena, just like yourselves. Uh, we're going to be able to talk about what they're doing, why they're doing it, and, uh, and be available for it to be, really take a deep dive in that area. Um, you know, the other big piece of this uh, is, so Zach owns this. He's the SVP of Strategic Initiatives, uh, GM of Monumental Sports Network. Uh, they are, it doesn't get any more kind of, uh, you know, traditional in terms of pro sports than Monumental with owning uh, teams, uh, owning venues, uh, and all the different partnerships that they have across there. So he's really going to be able to talk about some interesting things uh, that should be near and dear to all of your hearts, talking about the, the journey that they went on. Uh, before they even got involved in esports at all, they spent about a year and a half to, uh, on this journey, just really understanding who the key stakeholders are, um, what brands were doing, corporate sponsors, the media, various teams, tournament organizers, to really understand what's happening there. One of the things they realized was that the uh, the authenticity in terms of how you go into that market is really, really important, which, again, we'll get into a lot. And so you'll understand their investment strategy, um, a whole host of um, different opportunities that they have around monetization, marketing, ticketing, a lot of things that, that Ron was talking about. So that's going to be very exciting. We also have uh, Jason Lake from Complexity. Uh, some of you may have uh, seen a recent announcement, but uh, Jerry Jones uh, from the Cowboys actually just recently invested and bought majority interest in his company. Uh, and so, again, it's a, you're going to be able to you know, hear – firsthand uh, from some of the folks who are working with uh, some of the uh, largest and most iconic organizations across sports, but then how they're also working together uh, with one another to, to build that out and uh, actually see it come, come, to, come to life. Uh, the workshop that, we are, that we're doing on Sunday uh, is going to be ex really, really amazing. I'm super excited with how all that's come together. If you go to the next slide, uh, we'll jump into some of the details around that in terms of what you're going to be able to experience. So we're going to be doing an eSports 101, a crash course on eSports and its history, so you can understand where it came from, uh, where it's been, where we are, and where we're headed, uh, which I think in, in terms of any emerging space that's uh, growing uh, as rapidly as eSports that oftentimes, you know, many of us have not been exposed to and we don't know because it is a, a different medium uh, coming out of the gaming industry uh, and how you translate that to sports and brands and sponsorships. Uh, again, that'll really set the stage uh, for esports and why it's important. Uh, we're going to be diving into the investment trends uh, in the space as well. Who's doing it and why? 
you know, you can see groups like uh, Mark Cuban and the Mavericks. You can see different groups um, like um, Monumental, who you're going to hear from directly. Uh, you know, a whole host of different groups on that front. So um, you've got a, a, you've got some of the best minds at the forefront of uh, who's deploying capital and how they're monetizing these opportunities. Uh, the uh, fan engagement. There are some distinct differences between the medium of esports. You have the live event experience, which takes place in venues, but then you also have various platforms like Twitch and others uh, where it opens up a whole host of new opportunities for fan engagement that doesn't currently exist for uh, professional sports uh, because of the medium that you experience it and how you engage with other fans and players. So there's a lot of opportunity for uh, innovation around that. Uh, then we're going to get into the esports venues, destinations, what are some of the unique challenges and opportunities uh, that these types of uh, live events create uh, from a technical aspect, production, monetization. Uh, case in point, um, uh, ESL uh, did a League of Legends tournament and they did it at the Barclays uh, Arena in Brooklyn uh, last year. And fascinating statistic. 80% of the, I think it was almost 20,000 people that came in to that event uh, that was sold out uh, had never stepped foot in Barclays before. Uh, and so when you're looking at the opportunity to cultivate new opportunities, the opportunity to sell sponsorships uh, and, and new ticketing opportunities uh, into new demographics, uh, it represents a huge, huge opportunity above and beyond just the traditional partnerships that you're seeing. And then last but not least, uh, we're going to be having a reaction panel uh, with a number of the different uh, individuals who are contributing. Uh, and we're going to talk about the growth and opportunities uh, for pro sports and for esports. Uh, you're going to hear a lot about what's happening now today and then also, uh, you know, where things are going in the future. You know, how you can take these traditional media assets, sponsorship assets that you have in venue, that you have, you know, with uh, various media properties, and how do you then replicate that and leverage that uh, to, uh, you know, realize even more scale uh, in revenue by adding an esports team or property or an event to, to, to your venue or facility. Uh, so that is, uh, those are the two key areas that we're focused on across the, the breakout, uh, the breakout uh, session that we have in addition to the workshop. Uh, we're absolutely thrilled about it. Uh, you guys are going to have a whole half day to dive in and roll up your sleeves with us on that uh, if you're able to, to join us. So with that, Ron, I'm going to throw it back to you. Oh no! Thank you very much. I, I think it's interesting. Frisco, as as a as a home market for us this year, uh, has really interesting. Ironically enough, we didn't plan it this way, but it did develop this way. Frisco's really become a magnet uh, for esports teams. I, I know that Optic Gaming uh, just recently set up shop there. They're going to be part. You mentioned Mark Cuban's group uh, that's coming out and being a part of it. So I love the fact that the uh, participants are going to see this equation from all different scopes. You know, what the teams are doing and where they see how, how they could get involved in this, teams like Optic Gaming, how, do, how can we work with your organizations in getting involved in that, uh, as well as sponsors that are looking, standing on the sidelines, looking at this huge group. Uh, I mean, everyone, the, the discussion point about this next generation, if you would, uh, the millennials and beyond the millennials, uh, and how this is just sweeping them up. I know that, uh, to give you some idea, to add a number to Waco's fire, I know at the League of Legends World Championships that they just had in China in November, they had over 45 million people streaming the finals worldwide. I mean, you just can't ignore these kind of numbers. And ironically enough, it's great to see having both Eileen and Waco here, uh, because for a lot of us, it's going to become non-traditional revenue. That's a huge revenue stream. A lot of folks are discussing, do you build, a, do you build an addition onto your stadium and arena, uh, a venue just for esports, watching of the esports uh, in, that's going on in your different markets? So uh, I love seeing the world come together. Uh, and, and for our listeners here, these are, the two, you know, these are two new areas for us. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned before, things like ticket sales, sponsorship, marketing, advertising, social and digital media, these are all things management, are all key components that stay at the forum, uh, but we're always trying to explore some new avenues uh, for folks as well that, that didn't really know too much about what's going on. It's being discussed now in your organizations. It's being built up. 
Uh, and so come and listen to people that are actually doing it as well. They might be a year, they might be two years ahead of you, uh, but that's what the forum's about. And you heard both of our speakers talk about the family uh, that is the forum, and that's our job there, is to reach out across uh, different sports and disciplines, agencies, product and service providers, to bring everyone together and share ideas and, and what's working. Um, because our, our third and our, our keynote our, our speaker here that we wanted to introduce you to next is certainly one of our favorites and a longtime forum. I, I think this will be her sixth forum coming up. Uh, I think that Ruby is correct. First, is that correct? Yep. So she got her her five year watch the last time, but um, always fun to have Ruby with us. Her first forum was back in Phoenix in 2009, uh, and we asked her to come in and talk about a topic, do lead a breakout session on a topic that no matter what discipline you're in, we can all get better at if we're working with customers. And that is how can we, you know, deliver a better experience, fan experience, customer service. What could we be doing and how could we be doing it better? And, and in asking Ruby to come speak, and, and so this is her first time back in a couple of years, always she has a full house there. The topic, she comes up with a new topic, I think her topic this, uh, this year, a breakout session on Monday, Monday morning called How to Find the Missing Millions Right Under Your Nose. Uh, which I tell you what is an intriguing title and I think uh, definitely worth getting yourself in there to, to get a chance to listen to this. But in Ruby, you're talking with somebody here who's presented more than 2,500 programs in 23 countries. Uh, and just most recently, we lost her for a couple of years because she was just uh, finishing up her two-year term as the national president of the National Speakers Association. Uh, and in staying in touch with Ruby, I know she's delighted to be back into her real world. As you said, it, this is something that she feels very passionate about. Uh, she's worked with over 29 pro sports teams, designed and customized service experience programs for more than a thousand businesses, you guys. Uh, I mean, and the range runs the gamut from the only seven star hotel in the world to the Shell Grand Prix from Denver to Dubai. Ruby brings it all, unprecedented expertise and insights on how to create a service culture that motivates employees and promotes fan loyalty and retention, and best of all, helps deliver return to all of us uh, to our bottom line. So we asked and invite Ruby to come in and lead a breakout session for us this year. Uh, we're delighted to have her back. So Ruby, if you would, tell us a little bit, take us behind the scenes of what we can expect to hear from you next month. You bet, Ron, and I'm honored to be back. So excited about it. Uh, Ashley, if you want to advance the slide, thank you so much. Uh, this is the title of this session, as Ron mentioned, How to Find the Missing Millions Right Under Your Nose. And here's a thought that's going to make you a little crazy. Somewhere in your business, in a place you've completely overlooked, in a place maybe you haven't even thought to look, there's a major opportunity you're passing up. In this session we're going to do for the National Sports Forum, we will be talking about that. We're going to give you a playbook, and that playbook is a seven-star service playbook. You know, I can't imagine that there's any professional sports team out there that does not have a playbook for each and every game. Eileen mentioned the digital playbook, and actually that's one of the biggest trends that we're seeing right now is that people are really looking at the bigger picture, the holistic approach, and identifying that across the board, all of the people that work and create every touch point in the building is going to make a huge experience, positive or negative. So our goal in our session is to really talk about customer strategy and create that customer strategy playbook. You want to go to the next slide, Ashley? So I want to ask you a question. Out of 10 customers, how many are willing to pay more for better customer experience? Hmm. I want you to think about that. Oh, there's the answer right there. Eight out of 10 are willing to pay more. And I think sometimes we focus on creating the new instead of focusing on really enhancing what we do and making sure that everybody's engaged, everybody's working side by side. If 80% of our customers are willing to pay more for their customer experience, don't we want to make sure that they have that opportunity to engage that way? Next slide, please. In this session, we're going to really go over the details and we're going to talk about how you can do this. You know, the easy solutions that we'll create, you know, we'll identify a business plan to really attract those loyal, happy customers. 
and improving communication also improves col collaboration, sorry. You know, sometimes when I go into different venues and, and talk with the teams, we find that the there's a, a there's silos and they're not working side by side. So the communication is causing uh, service operations challenges because they haven't really identified how they can work side by side, moving in the same direction. Those experiences have many touch points and they're delivered by so many different departments. So working with the contracted partners, and here's a little tip ahead of the game: uh, don't call them contracted partners. You know, that word contracted is so, you know, unpersonal. If we really are partners and we're working with our food and beverage and security and parking, we need to really respect them, bring them into the conversation and really respect that they pay, uh, play a huge part in this impression that we're leaving with each one of the guests. Then we're also going to give you a formula for creating a customer service mantra. You know, that's not a marketing tool, it's an in-house slogan that really becomes the foundation of the service level. Uh, some of the mantras that I've helped different teams create, we had, I worked with the Kansas City Royals and theirs was take pride in creating, excuse me, take pride in treating our guests like royalty. Very simple, we use the word PRIDE for our acronym that we really trained to and, and held them accountable for. Tampa Bay Lightning is another favorite one, uh, electrifying experiences ignited by world-class service. I'm going to share some of these examples, how we use them throughout the training program and identified how it really enhances that experience all the way through if everybody's on the same page. Those are some of the things that we're going to be covering in that session. And of course, I only have an hour, so we're going to make sure that the attendees in that session get some good bonus handouts that will help them achieve their goals. That's what we're all about, is helping everybody learn and achieve the goals in increasing sales, uh, improving loyalty and retention. Next slide, please. So here's another quiz for you to think about. According to Career Builder, what percent of employers have increased educational requirements for their workforce and have seen a positive effect on customer loyalty. Well, I bet Ashley's gonna show you the magic number, but think about what it is. Yes, it's 24%. That means that there's still 75% of the folks out there that haven't figured out how important it is to have that experience across the board. You know, when we really take the time to identify what everybody needs to know to succeed and do their job, it really makes a difference in their performance. I, I do believe that it's important to make sure that, uh, you know, whether you're talking customers, guests, clients, or fans, you know, they really do want to have a great experience. And every single department and every single employee that works in a venue and contributes to the impact of the, the experience really needs to have some educational pieces that are going to help them achieve their goals and to help you achieve your goals. So I'm really excited about the session that's going to be in Frisco. I know that we've got uh, a tight time frame here this morning. So I'm going to go to the, the next slide and just uh, talk about some of the results that some of the clients that have applied this playbook have found. You know, we all want to improve customer satisfaction ratings. We all want to increase those renewals and make it easier every year to get them. We want to, if we're lucky enough to get in the playoffs, we want to make sure that that revenue increases. And of course, our season ticket members in sports is so much the livelihood. So one team that had applied this playbook strategy went from 4,000 to 11,000 season ticket members. You know, and we want to do the same for you, but you have to attend my sessions to find out how. That's the magic of this. So if you want to go to the next slide, I'm just going to reach out and, and offer you the opportunity to come learn how you can uh, improve that customer experience, drive customer retention revenue, and engage those fans so that they come back for more. And I believe through that whole process, we will help you find those missing millions. I know we were running a little late there with our time frame, and I don't want to take too much time here, so I'm gonna turn it back over to Ron and make sure that uh, he has a, a chance to wrap everything up. Hope to see you at my session on Monday, February 12th. Ruby, thank you so very, very much. And as you can tell, Ruby is very, very passionate about what she, her topic, she's passionate about life. Uh, it's just been a real pleasure to get to know Ruby uh, in putting on and creating the forum. So I thank Ruby. I certainly thank Eileen and Waco, uh, three of our, our many speakers. I think all told we have about 80 different speakers 
uh, coming up for you this, uh, this next month. Uh, but it will be here before you know it, you guys. I mean, so I think we are three some plus weeks away uh, from the forum. It'll, it'll be here on February 11th, 12th, and 13th. This year we are delighted to go to Frisco, Texas, uh, which for those of you who have not been there uh, is not just a little bit north and, and I want to say northeast, and I hope I'm not, it's not northwest, but I think it's northeast of DFW, uh, Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. So it's very easy to get into. Uh, for a lot of people, it's a very uh, central airport to be flying into. Uh, so we hope very much that we'll get a chance to see you out there. Uh, all kinds of different breakout topics on, on a myriad of topics uh, that, that encompass everything. But more than that, when we talk to our attendees after the event, we ask them what was the highlight of their event. Uh, it, it shouldn't surprise you, but the networking. It's the opportunity to get a chance to see people outside of, I mean, maybe if you're in the NBA, you talk to other people in the NBA, you go to NBA meetings and that's awesome. But how often do you get a chance to jump across the aisle and talk to somebody from Major League Baseball or the NFL or NASCAR, Churchill Downs? How often do you get that opportunity? And the answer is pretty much never. But at the forum, you can. Uh, you get a chance to not only get to meet people, but a lot of life bonds. I love hearing about people later on that tell me about how they've grown friendships and they vacation, their families know each other. Uh, it has been a real joy putting this fraternity together over the last 23 years, and, and we're delighted. We'd love to have you come join it. We'd love to have you come see it. Now, we start, like I said, on Sunday with the workshops, uh, but Monday morning before we bring everybody into the PSAV ballroom, uh, for our first-year attendees, we have a newcomer's breakfast. Uh, and this is a little icebreaker that has gotten to become extremely popular. I think the first year we did it, we maybe had 60, 70 people that took part in the breakfast. Uh, now it's well over 300. So you're going to want to get there. Uh, don't get there late because uh, you'll be sitting on the outside looking in. Uh, but it's our newcomer's breakfast, and it's run by uh, Mary Pink, who is on our steering committee from Iowa State University. She oversees the marketing at Iowa State for the Cyclones, and she does a great job putting this together. Each table uh, is spearheaded by a different steering committee member. So right off the bat, if you wanted to meet somebody, you know, from Coca-Cola, then go to Dory's table. Look for her name on the table and sit down with Dory Silverman and, and find out from Dory. Uh, get a chance to just really make that introduction, uh, not only with Dory, but with, you know, each table will have 10 people at it. And so we have found that right off the bat, some bonds have been made. It's a lot of fun to bring everyone together and kind of talk about what they're doing uh, and what to see. And right off the bat, it breaks the ice a little bit. So uh, we do hope you'll come see us. You're, you know, you can definitely, like I said before, make sure you take advantage. Look at your screen now. Reach out to Haley at Haley at sports-forum.com and let her know that you were on the webinar today. Uh, and you've got 48 hours. So you've got the next couple of days. Uh, and she'll roll the prices back to before they went up uh, on the 16th, which is today. Um, so with that said, I, I just want to welcome uh, you. I hope that you will come and join us. For those of you who have just signed up, welcome aboard. Uh, it'll be a lot of fun. You're going to have a terrific time here. I have people that come up to me afterwards and tell me this is why. They, they come to the forum because it reminds them why they got into the business in the first place. It's just a terrific group and network of people all doing what it is that we do. So we hope you will join us. We will be better for it, for having you with us. Uh, and that voyage will start by either going to our website and punching the Register Now button or by reaching out to Haley and taking advantage of the discount in the next couple of days. Uh, and certainly we encourage you to sign up for our Sports Digital Selling It, uh, which will be ideas like we talked about on our webinars, and we'll be delivering them to you. So with that said, everybody, thank you again for joining us. Uh, we hope to see you in three quick weeks in Frisco, Texas, and again to our speakers. Thanks so much for taking the time out today to come and give us a, a peek behind the scenes, uh, an inside look at what's coming up at the forum. Thank you everybody for joining us and we'll talk to you uh, for our next webinar coming up. Take care now. Bye-bye.